connected to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336-464-1806. Mark. Two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. We're coming up on one minute until airtime. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until airtime for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 second stations. Have fun. a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House, welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. Now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. We made it. Hope that this Monday evening is treating you and yours well. Been a while. Good to be back here at the familiar stop of Acme Oyster House. Uh, it is a great spot. 1201 Westheimer, home here at the Mike Bloomgren Show's Mondays, 7 until 8 p.m. Great setup tonight. All the games. Take your pick. All the games. you got Astros. You've got, uh, let's see, we got D-backs and Phillies. The game before that, we've got... Um, we've got the uh, 49ers and Vikings uh, about to get craned up here as well. So it's a great uh, sporting uh, venue. It's a great grub uh, institution. Uh, I don't know why I said that, but it's a great grub. I just had some meat pies, and I arm wrestled Walter for a couple of onion rings, and he was forced to give me those. And mm, those are some great onion rings. And uh, love me some Boom Boom Shrimp as well. I'm stubborn, and I stick to what I really love. they got great char-grilled oysters. You can't go wrong here at Acme Oyster House. Here's to Red Beans and Rice University. Acme Oyster House, a proud sponsor of Rice Football. After the game, come join us for a fried seafood platter, a shrimp po' boy, or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in Texas. Well, how does 42 to 10 sound? How about that game Thursday against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes? So many... Um, talking points coming out of that one uh that game was uh definitely one that folks will remember for a while uh the owls most lopsided win in a conference game uh since call it the charles ross game in uh 2013 where he had the uh, record-setting five touchdown game against la tech and uh rice hosting 
Tulane coming up here on Saturday. If you did not hear uh, last week, they had moved that up to a 3 o'clock start time, and that'll be on ESPN2, and we'll have the audio side of it on the Varsity Network app, the Rice House Game Day app, and ricehouse.com. This will be the first time a ranked team has come to Rice Stadium since, since, any guesses? Last time? Chuck, you know. Uh, seven years ago when uh, Baylor came into Rice State. I believe that was a Friday night game off the uh, top of the knock. And so, yes, I do remember a few things. And I was actually proud. I remember this one from reading old notes. Um, that will be the first ranked conference opponent at home since BYU in 1997. So it will be a great atmosphere. Obviously, Tulane as a great Houston alumni base. We want uh, all our Rice fans out there and then some. Uh, bring a friend, bring 10, and uh, support our great student-athletes. 2.30, we'll have the call uh, on the Houston Methodist pregame starting then at 3 o'clock. Go to SyncMyGame.com if you'd like to match up our audio with the video of that one. Uh, if you did not hear the nugget today, I'll tell you now that uh, the SMU kick time has been announced for 6.30 uh, coming up next Saturday. That is the uh, Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, looking forward to going to that banquet on uh, Friday night. It is an amazing class of uh, Rice Hall of Famers coming up. And uh, really excited for that one coming up. And surrounding, of course, a, uh, a rivalry against SMU. But enough of me yapping. We'll hear from the man of the hour, head coach of a Rice House, Mike Bloomgren, coming up next. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Shoppers has the right John Deere for your piece of Texas. If you're looking for a tractor, gator, or lawnmower, let the experts at Shoppers give you the right answers to your John Deere questions. Shoppers makes buying a piece of John Deere equipment easy with our online Build It, Price It, Own It tool. You can add attachments specific to your needs or check out our ready-to-go John Deere tractor packages. See all that Shoppers has to offer by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsors of Rice Owl Athletics. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar, the Talking Spokes Oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our pets. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come Acme, bro. Not you. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Didi, welcome back here. The Mike Bloomgren Show here. 7 o'clock, the Monday nights, the rest of the season here. And uh, we have a great show as well. Uh, we have running back Dean Connors coming up next segment, uh, fullback uh, Garen Hargon, and then running backs coach uh, John Settle coming up after that. Forgot to mention that in the first segment. And I was just kidding about that whole Hall of Fame banquet. That is this Friday. I was uh, politely corrected on that one. That is this Friday, and homecoming is uh, next uh, Friday, uh, the weekend of the SMU game. But joined now by Dunleavy family head football coach, Marais Dows, Mike Bloomberg. Boss, how are we doing? Really good. 
Outstanding. Yeah. Uh, lengthy practice today. How was practice? Yeah, so it was a it was a really good Tuesday practice for us. Uh, we because of the playing on Thursday night and kind of being able to take care of the uh, or take advantage of the last part of the bye week. We did use Sunday, gave the players Friday and Saturday off. Use Sunday as our Monday. Today is our Tuesday because tomorrow is such a big, heavy, intensive lab day at Rice University. So we get to give them that day off, and then we'll be right back on track with our normal Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, then get a chance to welcome the Green Wave on Saturday. Uh, we'll talk about Willie Fritz's team coming up later in the show, but wow, what a win. 32-point win against Tulsa Thursday night, the most lopsided win in uh, 10 years in a conference game. Um, a lot went into that. What, what are your thoughts on that one? And uh, after a week off, uh, the guys uh, played about as well, Nate and I were talking, that, that we've seen in our time together. It's, it's been a while since they've been that dominant. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I thought they played great. I was so proud of them and uh, so proud of their preparation. You know, that's what, what we had to do, right? We talked about it. We had to have a great bye week. We had to rest and recover. We had to take advantage of that time to focus on our academics and get ahead on some, some volunteer opportunities and things like that. And then we had to jump into the Tulsa prep and we had to take advantage of having a 12 day week before we played them. And uh, I think they did a great job of that. So, and the way they performed coming out, uh, really feeling like we played, you know, very similar to the Texas Southern game, right? Where you played good in all phases really for 60 minutes. And uh, there was a little bit of a low in the second quarter offensively where we just were struggling to get first downs and keep the thing moving. But I thought the two-minute drive right before half, and certainly the second half, was about as dominant as it gets. You know, the, uh, the offense was unique, right? They had three drives where they scored under a minute, and they had two drives where they held the ball for eight minutes and ended up with a touchdown. So uh, I think we had the ball almost 23 minutes in the second half. That's pretty dominant and pretty good football, and it takes really all three phases to make that happen. And in the first quarter, I can't remember this ever happening. Uh, on the right side or an opponent, uh, you forced three turnovers in the first quarter how one how big was that and and two that really set the tone the rest of the way did it not it, it did and it's so important and when you you love when you get what you emphasize we talked all week uh that, that bye week about turnovers and how the ball's so important they named the dang game after it you know and <laughs> uh just really emphasizing the takeaways and emphasizing protecting the ball and so to have a 3-0 turnover margin and like you said in the first quarter our defense took the ball away three times and had a fourth down stop in the red zone like it doesn't get much better than that that was that was so phenomenal and uh two of those opportunities two of those turnovers the offense turned into touchdowns and we got to find a way to do that on the third one as well uh, but again, lots of steps forward for this program, for this team, and uh, a lot to be happy about. You're so nice enough to, uh, not that you need the pat on the back, but you, you talk to me game day. Most coaches like to do their interview Thursday or Friday, but uh, you, you give me that fresh insight. And one of the things you said was, hey, we got to force the turnovers. You did that, but you also told me, hey, we have to have a fast start. And you got that as well, too. So how big have those been? 90 to 13, you've outscored the opponents in the first quarter this year. That, that continued that trend on Thursday. Yeah, it, it was great to see. It. And I think that's such a testament to Coach Tuyas Sopo and the offensive coaching staff and these players for really buying in. When we put the openers on paper, you know, we kind of put a first 20 out there and we'll come off of it for third down or for red zone. But those 20 plays, we spend so much time. You know, the guys see them for the first time on Thursday. Then we go through them and practice them on Thursday. Then you walk through them on Friday. Then you walk through them Friday night or Saturday morning, and then right after pregame meal. And so it's not just the look we expect. Of course they're getting that look, but they're getting also what, hey, maybe it'll be this. Make sure we make this adjustment if it's this. Let's kill it to this play if it's this. And uh, the guys do such a good job really leaning into those and being so prepared, and, and you just see it. That's the results you get from when you have a veteran bunch that really knows what the heck to do. 516 total yards in the third quarter you outgained them 166 to 9 uh, that went part of like you said earlier changing that tempo in the second half how big was that stranglehold in the third quarter for you yeah I thought that was great I thought that was a great drive but the one I'm most proud of is, is the one in the fourth quarter to be honest with you when you I think it was nine minutes and 56 seconds or something like that that's just domination and I think we got the ball on the four we actually went backwards on the first play and so we ended up with the, the two and so we marched 96 or 98 yards depending on how you look at it over that span and uh, when you can do that for your defense, it's just, it's, uh, it's really fun. JT Daniels continues to do JT Daniels things. Uh, 342 yards, his uh, fourth 300-yard game of the season. Um, what's the big fella continue to do too well? Just uh, setting the tempo and uh, set, making everybody else around him better, right? He does. And, uh, you know, you'll have to ask Dean. I can't remember who was telling me the story, but, like, right when we started that two-minute drive, Dean looked at somebody who was like, 
we're so good at this. We're going to go score a touchdown. And, uh, I, again, I can't remember who told me that story, but uh, it, it is the confidence that our kids have in him and, and what we're doing in two-minute right now. I thought the line did line and the backs did a great job protecting in two-minute, and he made a few great throws. I mean, surgical throws that were just uh, awesome to see. And, again, I felt like that really got him and our offense back on track for the second half, and I believe JT ended the day 14 of his last 15 passes. Yeah. And the one to Luke, I guess – the, yeah, going to our left, your left too, in the first half, it, it was just, you don't see throws like that at this level. And Luke told us after the game, yeah, I just looked up, it was right there, I caught it. He did the hard part. <laughs> so uh, you, you just don't see lasers and rockets like that. It kind of whizzed by the opponent's ear hole there. Yeah, they're both pretty unbelievable football players. It was a great <laughs> throw and a great catch. Uh, that was That's a lot of fun to be a part of. And, and that was on a called run, and they just saw something that they didn't like. And so JT checks to that, gives Luke the call, and, and uh, that's just two players making plays. Uh, Luke, among a great receiver core, six catches, 99 yards, landed ransom goals, season high, 58 yards. Ross and McNeil made a couple of good catches again. Um, it's not easy to go out there and put up those kind of numbers. What's the receiving core meshing like, and, and what, what have you all seen from them, you and Coach Kershaw and company? Yeah, I think it's such a young group, you know, like we talk about Luke, and, and he's the easy one to talk about, right? And, of yeah. course, he's doing phenomenal. But when you mention guys like Rawson, who's a redshirt freshman, Braylon Walker, who's also doing some big things in games, he's a redshirt freshman. Uh, we know Landon's a, a true freshman. I mean, he got here in January. Uh, so there's a lot of guys that are making plays. And then the guy that's consistently making plays out of the backfield is Dean Connors, you know, and, and whether he's getting handed the ball in his belly or catching it out of the backfield, he's such a threat. And uh, He's a... A guy that, that JT's leaning into a lot and, and always knows where he is because JT knows the play so well. And, and so whenever something's not there, he's so comfortable getting the ball down to Dean and trusting him. Speaking of Dean, uh, the first 100-yard game for a Rice back in two years, nine for 120, three touchdowns uh, in there. How has Dean matured, as you've seen, not just this season, but as he's come along? I mean, he's kind of developing into that main back, but Juma had, had some good rushes the other night, too. But speak to Dean specifically. Yeah, I think they're such an unselfish group. I think they all just root for each other every chance they're in there together. And, and you know, we talk a lot about Mudita, joy for others, and uh, that room exudes that. Uh, but Dean has just grown so much in becoming a complete back, like we're talking about, right? Like in the passing game, he's always been a weapon. But down in and down out, uh, you should have seen his first rep of one-on-one -on -one pass pro. Like, your dog could have done better at blocking the linebacker than Dean did. And, and now he's a guy that we can trust to go up there and block any linebacker on the field, break anybody off route-wise, line up as a receiver and beat somebody. Or, again, just take a handoff and do something special, making a move on the safety like he did the other night. So I, I think that's where his growth has been. The other growth has been... Uh, again, I don't know how to attribute it to Coach Settle, uh, but he is Coach Settle is such a good, calm soul, and I think he slowed Dean and Dean's process down a little bit so that he can see things and read things and be at the proper pace that the play demands, and uh, that's one area that Dean's really improved. Don't want to overlook the defense. We talked about the turnovers earlier, but some uh, other great individual performances. I didn't ask you the MVP of the week question either. So on defense and on the other units too, who, who were those? Guys? Yeah, so on defense, it was Trey D., uh, Treshawn Devones, he had six tackles, uh, two PBUs and one tackle for loss, which was a four-yard loss for them, and uh, that was a big play. Dean Connors was our Offensive Player of the Week, and our, our Special Teams Captain Chike Inabugu was our Special Teams mm -hmm. Player of the Week. And how about the way Enoch Goda's come on, and I mean, no, no doubt about the kickoffs now, that's bo booming him through. I know he had the one OB, but... He did, and, and you know what, it wasn't that bad of a hit. Like, I, I wish, uh, you know, obviously we, we can't have penalties in that situation, starting the starting the third quarter, starting the second half, but you're right, like just the confidence we all have in Enoch and the way everybody celebrates his kickoffs is, is pretty fun to see. But Gabriel uh, Taylor, his uh, first pick of the season, sixth of his career, uh, how do you think the secondary did against a Tulsa unit that, I mean, I was looking, okay, who's the quarterback now? They're going play to play to play quarterbacks just on a turnstile back there. Or both in the game at the same yeah, time, exactly, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> which is a whole other <laughs> issue. Yeah, I thought they did a great job, and I, I thought it was great for Gabe to get that pick. And, you know, Gabe met with the ESPN people the night before uh, in the hotel like we do sometimes, and 
he told him, he said, I'm going to get a pick and I'm going to take it back to the house. And so after he got that one on the second play, I was like, all right, that's good. That's half right. You told him you were going to take it to the house. So now let's get another one and take it to the house. But uh, unfortunately, uh, JoJo Gene and was going to knock the ball out of the quarterback's hands before he could throw it. Maybe that was going to be Gabe's and he was going to take it to the house. And then uh, you have Josh Piercy run down the quarterback and knock that ball out. So uh, Gabe didn't get that opportunity. Maybe, uh, maybe he's due for this game. We'll take it. That's fantastic. The bravado of youth, huh? Yes. Uh, speaking of Coach Settle, uh, he's coming up here in a few segments. Just But speak uh, not only the growth of the running game, he's obviously made a difference, but your connection to him and, and, and coming in, just sliding right in there on the staff for you. Yeah, it's, it's rare because he's somebody that I hadn't worked with and I didn't have a whole lot of people that I was incredibly close to that had worked with him. And that's, that's really not my wheelhouse. Uh, I, I like to hire people that I've been around, and uh, but he was just so highly recommended by everybody, including my agent, Jimmy Sexton, was like, hey, you got to take a look at this guy. Uh, and so I started researching him, and I saw that he was with Pat Hill at Fresno State, if you remember that name. Yeah. Coach Hill was a, a master coach, and Pete Alomar was already on our staff. Pete Alomar had worked with Pat Hill as well. We got Pat on the phone, and he was like, you're crazy if you don't hire him, Bloom. Like, you got to hire him. And, uh, you know, I talked to some people at Kentucky. They called him Rev. And uh, so they were like, y'all, Rev's the best. His players will love him. And, and you know, you're just going to love the way he develops a guy, his players. But the other thing for me that's always so important is, like, you can't just hire somebody that's youthful and has only been in a spread system. If they've never been in the volume offenses or the West Coast offenses like we, had, like we are, it, it, the learning curve is just too big and the players know more than them and it doesn't work good. So the bottom line is this is a guy that's played in the NFL. He's coached in the National Football League. He's been at Wisconsin. You know, I mean, been in all these great offenses. And then I, I thought back to Kentucky's offense last year, and I didn't see him much, but when I did, the only bright spot offensively was this running back, uh, Rodriguez, I think. And I was like, well, may as well find out what magic he's got and talk to him, <laughs> brought him down, and uh, I'm so glad he's joined our staff. Hey, Coach, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you again here coming up. Sounds great. Appreciate it. Dunleavy family at football coach for Rice Owls, Mike Bloomberg. And stay tuned. Coming up next, Dino coming to the high table here. We'll talk some uh, Owls running game with Owls running back Dean Connors. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show live here from Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting blessed. Down he goes. The speed. By 40, there he goes. Down the sideline. Mr. College Football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You cannot hitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the board. Back in the end zone. 30, 20. See you guys to this one. This is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. What if a world-leading hospital could also be your neighborhood doctor's office? With Houston Methodist, it is. Our primary care physicians invest time in your visit so you're seen and heard, virtually and in person at locations across the city. And we're always ready to connect you with our network of top specialists. To learn more, visit HoustonMethodist.org. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team at Strategic Wealth Designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls! You're 
you're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Clapping. That's a good beat there. Welcome back here on the Mike Bloomgren Show. We uh, have a running back and a backfield team on this one coming up in just uh, a little bit. We have fullback uh, Garen Hargan coming on, and then we have uh, the aforementioned running backs coach, uh, John Settle, and then Coach Bloom will be back, and we'll preview Willie Fritz and his Tulane Green Wave coming in at 22nd in the nation. That's 3 o'clock coming up Saturday on the Varsity Network app and, of course, on ESPN2. Joined now by one of the two number zeros on the Rice Owls roster, Dino Dean Connors. How you doing, young man? Good. How are you? Outstanding. So is there a fight for zero? I've always heard Nate's kind of like – the uh sometimes the player intermediary for you y'all love those single digits yeah, yeah. How, how did that go or are you just kind of fall in your lap that seems like a pretty privileged jersey number there yeah there was a lot of you know uh, uh zero wasn't really a big like number i guess when i was growing up we were watching it uh, and uh i was 22 when i got here that's what i wore in junior college and uh chris you know we i guess there's jersey changes after every um spring season i think it is and um, I asked him if, you know, is zero available? And he said, uh, yeah, actually, the <laughs> person where last year has gone. I was like, oh, sweet. Like, love to have it. Okay, so it did kind of just line up for you perfectly, yeah, it, huh? It was a pretty cool uh, opportunity. Okay, so no uh, hid meaning or anything like that, too. It's, uh, it's worked out well for you this year. Um, first off, the game at Tulsa, nine carries, career high 120. Appreciate you joining us after. So this is repeating a lot of the same questions about that. But three touchdowns, just what was, was clicking. Obviously, you got the, the long touchdown run that accounted for almost half those yards. But it seemed like you, the line, Dean Mass coached that in the first segment. They had their best blocking game, and that worked really well with you. Uh, what do you attribute that good game to? Uh, that's You just said it right okay. there. The O-line was blocking it up good all night. And, um, you know, we averaged you know, six point forget what exactly it was per carry and those guys are balling and they put two good weeks together mm-hmm. and for you i've always been interested to ask basketball players this sometimes it's easier to track do you kind of know okay i had a really good game here and i know about how many yards because i forget i think we talked to brant after the game too he's had dan 120 man good good for him he's like he's really happy he didn't know that yet so when when you find out you have a total like that or do you kind of have an idea throughout the game coach settle uh he, he preaches this, and it's to just play every play and don't look up at the score, don't think about the stats, and then once the game's over, to look up at the scoreboard and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how we approach it, not really thinking about stats during the game, just trying to win. So the uh, 54-yard touchdown run was not your longest play of the season. You had that 80-yard run at South Florida, and uh, you came to the podium, I think it was the Tuesday after, describing that. Um, talk about that play because it was, it was a unique play because you were, you were telling your dad something about that play after the game that related to what you kind of grew up seeing guys do. Yeah, just kind of <laughs> catching the ball and uh, knowing that there's guys behind you and um, – you know, for whatever reason, I took a peek up at the the jumbotron in that stadium. I'm just large screen because it's the NFL stadium, and I could kind of see where dudes were, and it was kind of unique. And I've never <laughs> realized why or how people do that, but now I do realize that it's possible, and it's pe- people do use utilize that. Yeah, like hey, that comes in handy. Yeah. you know, when it's when it's right there. Um, who was your football influence growing up? Um, I got to attribute it to my dad. Uh, he had a bunch of VHS tapes of his high school games and college games. And um, I got to, one day I was kind of going through a little closet and, you know, put them in the little, uh, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, Rick, VCRs? VCRs. There you and, go. And uh, watched it on the, watched it on the TV. And, um, you know, he's, he's very humble and, you know, was like, oh, you know, don't, don't look at my stuff. Uh, you know, try to be your own individual and things like that. But, uh, I really looked up to him, and you know he played uh, running back and fullback. So, yeah, I saw that he had played. Where did he play again? Uh, uh, so out of high school, he went to Oregon. Um, That's right. Right, and then he uh, transferred to the University of Pacific. But like I've asked uh, Luke before a few weeks ago, when you have a dad of that ability growing up, I mean, surely at sometimes I don't want to answer it for you, but you say, hey, hey, dad, what about this? And I don't pretend to know the running back game. But how much would you lean on him, or would he be kind of hesitant to try to give you that? My, my dad's pretty quiet, yeah. um, but he coached me all the way up until high school, um, whether that was youth football. And he never took, like, a head coaching job. He was always kind of just an assistant helping out. And, uh, you know, he, he I asked him questions about everything, and he gave me a good answer. But, um, like I said, very humble guy. didn't want to, like, push too much, you know. 
let me be me, and I appreciate that a lot. So a couple weeks also, we had assistant strength coach Connor Gorley up here, and uh, I said, who, who, who would we not think is one of the stronger guys on the team? Well, he said, you. So you've always been, I mean, you're, you're big, but you're not that big in, in the sense of obviously like the lineman, but have you always been pumping the iron like that and uh, all that good stuff? Shoot, I was like 165 pounds my junior year of high school, um, and then I we got that uh, pandemic or whatever happened <laughs> during that year, um, and I uh, went to Hawaii, um, and my best friend Xander Leros, he uh, he was a big workout guy. His older brother was too, and you know we uh, spent three, four months just literally working out every day and nothing oh. else, and I think. Uh, I learned a lot of stuff from, you know, exercise science and stuff from him and, um, you know, getting my diet right and stuff and um, Coach Hans and Coach Dub and Coach Gorney and Coach Mo um, and Gummy Worm Guy help out a lot in that, <laughs> you know, in that room and they've developed me ever since I've been here. Yeah, who knew coming out of the Tulsa game, Gummy Worm Guy would be a, a viral sensation. Yeah. Uh, so you, you take a lot of those gummy worms and... Use them to good uh, yep. sugar burst, huh? For sure, yeah. So you, you touched on part of your very interesting uh, backstory with the Hawaii connection. My gosh, what is it? I, I dare to say outside of Hawaii, we, we might have the most Hawaiian guys on a roster. Was it five or six, just maybe off the top five at least, off the top of my head? So, one, what, 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 what is it with that Hawaiian connection? Or do you two kind of, all, all you guys kind of thick as, thick as thieves, Hawaiian guys? Yeah, so Tim Tim's one of my good buddies. I went to high school. You know, I played on the same team as Connor Hunt. And then uh, Matt Sykes, uh, he went to St. Louis. He was on the same island as Tim Horn. Um, and, uh, you know, I, those guys were all, were all, you know, reminisce every now and then and talk <laughs> about the game. And, um, or, you know, what was it like when you guys played? But uh, that's a pretty unique thing, and I'm grateful for it. And uh, I can share it with those guys. Yeah. So you were there, you're telling me off air, 7 to 17, and you get back there a good good amount or how, how often do you get to go go back there every time i visit my dad usually on holidays okay. or stuff and you know he still lives there and i get to go to hawaii which again is an opportunity that's really i'm thankful for because um a lot of people that's a vacation destination and just I a bit get to call that place home so it's pretty awesome so uh give me my my texas ignorance uh on hawaii ignorance i guess uh from kamuela hawaii what island is that that's on the Big Island. On the yep. Big Island, okay. Yeah. So going back, growing up, like you were saying, don't have really huge. You're just you're out there. It's like a whole other country. You don't have any many sports teams, but you kind of come over here to the mainland and you develop your taste for the culture and sports and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my uh, my sister was more of a diehard uh, uh, fan of a sports team growing up. She uh, loved the Dodgers, and then. Um, my dad, and he liked the Dodgers, too, and my mom, she didn't really have a big team, but uh, kind of growing up, I, especially in Hawaii, you kind of root for players, and, you know, I think I kind of adopted that, you know, having star players, and especially guys who are from Hawaii, the state of Hawaii roots for those teams, and yeah. I think it's pretty cool that they do that. And, and finally, you got a big game coming up this weekend. Uh, overall, overall thoughts in having a nationally ranked opponent coming in, and uh, anything about that uh, Tulane defense, obviously, it gets a lot of headlines for Coach Fritz's team. You no, know, that, that's a great team. They're well coached and they play hard. And um, you know, we're thankful for their opportunity to play against a talented team. And uh, looking forward to a good game. All right, somebody get him a VCR. We don't have any VCRs in here, I don't think. But uh, I guess NIL days, we got to get you some kind of VCR sponsorship or any digital. Yeah, you're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Dino. Thanks Appreciate it. Me. The one and the only Dean Connors joining us here at the high table. That's awesome. Stay tuned. One of his backfield mates, fullback. Uh, Garen Hargon will join us next here. It is the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. 
At Shoppers, we get all kinds of John Deere tractor questions, like what horsepower tractor do I need? Do I need four-wheel or two-wheel drive? What kind of attachments do I need for my John Deere tractor? The Shoppers tractor experts have the answers to all those questions. Or you can go online and create your own John Deere tractor with our Build It, Price It, Own It tool. It'll give you costs along with finance options. You can see all our specials by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsor of Rice Owl Athletic. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. Owl fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Yes, yes, stay tuned. Coming up in uh, just a bit, we'll talk to uh, Owls first-year running backs coach, John Settle, and then Mike Bloomgren will be back, and we will scout out those greenies, the uh, talented Tulane Green Wave uh, coming up here. But uh, joined now by number 44, your Rice Owls roster, Garen Hargan. How are you? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for uh, coming on out here. And your position is so unique this day in college football, being a, a fullback. And obviously, most of us know the background with Coach Bloomgren in that offense. So um, kind of explain how unique that is and, and your role in, in that, blocking for the guys and uh, being out there so much. It's, uh, it's definitely unique because, um, you know, you turn on and watch college football and you don't see a lot of it. Um, it's nice when you turn on professional football and you, you see a lot of it. Um, and we're really blessed. You know, I think we have two of the best. If you're going to play the position, uh, Coach Settle, who coached, you know, a lot of good fullbacks at Wisconsin, and then Coach Bloomgren, um, obviously, with what he did at Stanford. So um, if you want to be a fullback, this is, this is definitely the place to do it. I never assume it's easy in a position switch, but you're this, reading about your background, this great uh, linebacker in the Shreveport area, obviously can play some ball, come into Rice, and you play defense, but making that switch the last couple years, was that an easy transition, and, and, and what did you have to adjust the most? Because it's obviously a lot of different complexities there. I, the, the positions are pretty similar. You know, you're, you're going downhill and, and hitting people. You know, you just can't, <laughs> you just can't tackle the people. Um, you know, the, the switch was, um, you know, not 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 too hard um because it really just is you know the physicality and um learning learning the playbook um you know but i think it makes you a, a better rounded football player when you understand you know the other side of the ball and kind of how they want to fit the run um and you know how that how that kind of goes hand in hand together do you have a favorite block like this year uh, I, I forget where you were in relation to a couple of deans long runs and yeah. it, it didn't even have to be that game or or last season or um, I'm sure you remember those as much I was, as I yeah. would say. You know, one of the one of the blocks against Houston. You know, that game was just was really electric. Um, you know, having a having a freshman running back behind you, just making plays, and um, I, I think it would probably be the two point conversion, just because of you know how big we see that ended up being. You know, later in the game with us, you know, uh, batting down that ball in the end zone. But um, you know, anytime you get to you get to have or block for people, you know, like Dean or Dalen, whoever it may be, it's a uh, it's an honor and a privilege, and, and I enjoy every time we get to do it. And there are obviously other sets when you're out there when it's not the third and short or fourth and short, but the numbers that they give us, I mean, y'all are so good in those short yardage situations. Right. I know it, a lot of that, you won't brag on yourself, but that, a lot of that is you and the other guys. So how much more juiced up do you get in those kind of, you always, obviously always want them to get the, the first downs every play, but when you have right. those tight spots, right. how, how much does that fire y'all up that you well, know you'll be getting in there? I'm a firm believer in, you know, you get, you get what you preach as a coach and the, the team kind of takes on the, um, the image of the coach, you know, coach Bloom, um, you know, this is, this is his deal, you know, short yardage goal line is, is his guy, his baby, you know? And so it's, uh, it's an honor when you're on the unit, you know, we all get a shirt and, um, 
you know, it, we're really excited um, when we go out there because we know how hard we work during the week to get those opportunities. You know, we don't, it's not just the scheme, it's how hard we work at it. Um, you know, on a Wednesday practice, Thursday, Friday, you know, leading into Saturday, you know, we put a lot of time and effort um, into it. And so it's, it's really exciting when you get to go out there Saturday and, and have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So business and business major, finance mixed in there, sport management. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, after sir. the playing days, what do you uh, want to want to be doing? With <laughs> a rice degree in hand, or do you know? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not not really sure yet. Just just taking it one day at a time, and and you know, um, I'm just looking forward to practice on Wednesday, and we'll we'll see what kind of happens after that, you yeah. know. And uh, but we'll see. Yeah, tell me about your internships yeah. uh, in the last couple of years. You said one was with the Dynamo, mm -hmm. and the other one was with a uh, Texas Capital Bank. So okay. um, kind of got a little sports, a little finance in there. Uh, in the summertime, you know, we do a great job here of, you know, working out in the morning and then kind of letting uh, letting our student athletes, you know, go and you know, explore an internship in the summer, take a couple classes to get ahead on schoolwork. And uh, so it was really, you know, blessed with those couple opportunities the last few summers to, to get that in. And perfect for you coming tonight here at ACME. Uh, Louisiana guy like yourself. Okay. I know you Louisianans kind of split up the north and south <laughs> part of the state, but still kind of right. feel at home getting some good Cajun food. That's here. right. Yeah. If, if you ask probably many people on the Tulane team, they'll tell you I'm from South Arkansas or East <laughs> Texas, uh, being a, being in Shreveport, you know, but uh, definitely still a part of Louisiana and, and loving, loving to get, you know, some of the food, whether it's red beans and rice or, or uh, jambalaya or whatever that may be. Hey, nothing wrong, especially with that East Texas part of it. I <laughs> won't mind claiming that. But, but, yeah, like uh, Dean said, what's, what's it mean having a, a, a highly ranked team like that that coming in and uh, some, some focal points against a, a great squad that they have coming in? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're really excited. You know, it's uh, obviously a great opportunity for us, an opportunity that um, we don't take lightly. Um, you know, and we're just really excited to, to kind of build on what we did this past week and, um, you know, continue to build this thing out and, and just show that consistency week in and week out. Hey, great talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks Appreciate it. On. Yes, Darren sir. Hargon joining us here on the Mike Bloomgren Show. Stay tuned. Coming up in a bit, we'll have running backs coach John Settle. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House here from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar, the talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back me oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. At True Anomaly Brewing, our greatest achievement lives in knowing that everything we've learned is yours to enjoy. While it may not be rocket science, we brew with the same detail and dedication learned while running mission operations for NASA. Taking risks is part of our DNA. We don't take them just to say we did, we take them because of the result. Bold brews we're proud to share with fellow adventure seekers. True Anomaly Brewing. Beer for the explorers. The newly renovated Houston Marriott Medical Center Museum District is a proud new sponsor of Rice University Athletics. For visiting families and fans, the closest hotel to Rice University is delighted to offer preferred rates. Guests will enjoy two new restaurants, a new exclusive M Club Lounge, and complimentary shuttle service within two miles of the hotel. Visit Marriott.com to learn more. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting blessed. Down he goes. The speed. The 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. Mr. College football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You can unhitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the board. Back to the end zone. 30. 20. Say goodbye to this one. This is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show 
Live at Acme Oyster House, here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back here on the Mike Bloomgren Show here at Acme Oyster House. They've got all the games up here. It is a great, great spot uh, every Monday night of the season here talking some Owls football. We'll have uh, Coach Bloom coming back next segment talking about uh, the Green Wave, but joined right now by the Rev, right? John Settle, Owls running backs coach. And you don't know how you got that nickname, huh? I have an idea. Okay. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but you wear you wear it well. I could, I could see why they would say that. So what appeal appeal to you taking this job? We heard coach's side of it in his segment when you're getting that call on the other end and I know it's just not a slam dunk first call unless it was like what d- describe it from your end. Well, I had had uh, uh, an opportunity to look at a couple of different places and it was just uh, a unique situation where I was sitting on the couch playing with my uh, grandson and the phone rings and I'm thinking I don't know anybody in Houston <laughs> and um, it was uh, Coach Bloom uh, who uh, after talking with him uh, invited me to just, just to take a look come out just to take a look and see what I thought so I came out watched, watched the practice I practiced watched the guys run around and then had an opportunity to speak to him didn't know him, never met him, but as you as he mentioned earlier, we had a mutual um, friend in Coach Hill. Um, but while I was here watching things, listening to him, uh, I thought, hey, this is a great place uh, to to coach. I'd be around some great guys. Mm-hmm. Love smart players, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> makes you look smarter. <laughs> huh? <laughs> And so it, it, the things just came together. We were able to make it work. Yeah. Well, discuss this unit, not only these two guys here, but the way y'all have used uh, Juno Oroviano, p- particularly recently. And obviously we know about him for his long career here. But you've got a great group of guys and some talent back in there that, that y'all have mixed. So kind of give us the overall general feel that you have in the group. I think it, it all goes back to having a, a great offensive coordinator who has a, a, a great offensive mind. And it's not uh, just in a box who, who's not afraid to think outside of the box and, and use different players. Um, the one thing you have to do is you have to know the strengths. And so uh, Tui uh, does a good job of um, knowing each individual player, knowing their strengths, what, uh, how they can help us, uh, and then getting those guys in position uh, to make plays. The thing I like about uh, the group that I have uh, is that they can – affect the game both running the ball and and catching the ball so uh all the guys have a good skill set um you know it's been fun the last couple of weeks to see guys uh, coming to their own we've been able to play um you know dean uh, juma as you mentioned uh the guy that i'm excited about is is, uh quentin jackson q jack q jack we call him who (laughs) who I, I, who's doing a good job on special teams, but again, can help us um, offensively. So uh, I, th- I think it's just uh, not af- being not afraid to play guys. And, and like I said, once you uh, recognize that strength, being able to use those strengths. Mm-hmm. So Coach Settle, two-time All-American in App State, played six years in the NFL, the first undrafted player in NFL history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. That is a good uh, tribute question for somebody around the water cooler. What was your, I mean, obviously Super Bowl champ with Washington back in the day. The list goes on and on. You have a, you have a favorite uh, NFL memory or time, time? I mean, a lot of years to pick from. You played so long in the league. but uh, Probably the, the Super Bowl. Uh, being able to host that Lombardi Trophy was was uh, a, a great a great time, and I think uh, every young man when he starts out playing this game, no matter what age, I think the the pinnacle is that you're trying to reach is to be able to to hold that thing up at some point in time. And I was blessed to be able to to uh, have an opportunity as a free agent to to play to last long enough. Uh, <laughs> To be on the team, uh, to to be able to do just that, and uh, so that's probably uh, my uh, fondest memory, and in, uh, in my mind, my, one of my biggest accomplishments. 
And in your time with the Falcons, you played with Dion, right? Right when Dion was coming in, and obviously Dion making all the waves. And one of my favorite players growing up. Don't tell anybody. I was, grew up a Cowboys <laughs> fan. So you have a, a Dion story back in the Falcons days, and, and what what he's done has been been amazing there. And what oh, yeah. over there? Well, it, it probably has to be the first time he touched the ball. Yeah, uh, I had gotten so tired of hearing about Prime, 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 from some of the guys on the team, and and when he came in as a rookie, and. Uh, so when he went back to return his first punt, I, I stood up on the sideline. Let me see what this guy's all about. We're talking preseason, camp? I know we're talking about regular season. Okay. Just, okay. <laughs> we, were, we were playing for keeps. Okay. <laughs> and they, uh, they punt the ball to him. He muffs it, reaches down, picks it up, makes one turn, and it goes from about zero to 60 in about three seconds. <laughs> the very first one he touches, he takes it to the house. Like, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Different gear. <laughs> so that that's kind of the story. And then that was the, as they say, beginning the beginning and the end. Again. I mean, that guy um, was able every time he touched the ball, whether it was on offense, defense, special teams, uh, was uh, had a chance to take it to the house. So. Yeah. It, he's one of the most impressive players I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, nothing like him. No. Nothing like him. Uh, you also played for some great coaches, Joe Gibbs, Bill Belichick. Do you have any philosophy you take from, and not just them, but any of the coaches? Because I was looking down, and I was like, my gosh, you played for, for so many good ones. Who were some coaching mentors of yours? But, uh, probably uh, Coach Gibbs. And he, he's, he's the one guy that, um, that after, <laughs> after playing for a couple of coaches in Atlanta, and having an opportunity to to go to that franchise and to uh, to see what it takes to win a championship, um, it kind of opened my eyes. And I, I always thought that if I ever got got into coaching, that I wanted to be that that kind of a coach. He was able to communicate um, with us as players without having uh, to use four letter words, without having, <laughs> <laughs> without having to always raise his voice. Um, and and so I thought, hey. He treats me like I want to be treated. And, and so when I went into coaching, my whole thing was hey, treat guys like you want to be treated. And, and so I, I, I kind of adopted that through the years, and um, it's paid, paid great dividends. So I, I'm not changing. It's tw- uh, 29 years coaching, um, which is kind of hard for me to believe, but it's my 29th year, and um, that's been kind of my approach year in and year out. Yeah. Working out now, don't change it, right? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, finally, just looking at the numbers, and Coach will elaborate here next segment, but just looking at Tulane's defense, they're great against the run, and just uh, w- what have you seen? What, what stands out about that Tulane defense? What, what makes them so talented? Well, any, anytime you have a, a, a team that's coming in that's ranked, that's, uh, you know, they've only lost one game, you, you go back and you look at it, you try to break down, and, you, and my thing is I, I want to try to find out where the weaknesses are. Uh, and uh, they don't have a lot. <laughs> they don't have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, they they uh, active. They they play uh, within the, the system that they have. They trust it. Uh, they they're well coached, uh, as uh, as Dean <laughs> alluded to. And so uh, they they do not make mistakes. What they do is they uh, try to put enough pressure on you to force you to make a mistake. And so we have to uh, we have to be uh, detailed with everything that we do going into this ball game having the same amount of focus that we've had the last couple of weeks. And we just got to uh, find a way to get it done in the end. Hey, it's been great talking with you. Hey, Appreciate you. Thanks. Right, thanks. Thanks, Rev. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rev, golden rule there. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Stay tuned. Coming up in a bit, we will have more with uh, Coach Bloomgren previewing the uh, Tulane Green Wave. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show live from Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. 
big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls. Shoppers has the right John Deere for your piece of Texas. If you're looking for a tractor, gator, or lawnmower, let the experts at Shoppers give you the right answers to your John Deere questions. Shoppers makes buying a piece of John Deere equipment easy with our online build it, price it, own it tool. You can add attachments specific to your needs or check out our ready-to-go John Deere tractor packages. See all that Shoppers has to offer by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsors of Lysal Athletics. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Yes, indeed. Welcome back here at Acme Oyster House where we have uh, Coach Bloomgren here. Next week, uh, Rice uh, taking on SMU. We'll be back Monday to pre- uh, recap this uh, Tulane game and then preview those uh, ponies. Remember, it is uh, Hall of Fame weekend this weekend, homecoming coming up next weekend. But, uh, Coach, uh, great lineup, as always, with uh, backfield intensive. Your thoughts on the fellas coming up here? Yeah, like the thing that gets lost is, like, those guys are all glue guys. I mean, everybody sees the fabulous plays that Dean makes, and, and that's awesome, uh, obviously. Uh, but, like, guys like GH and, and their little group of – Luke McCaffrey and Tim Horn and, and the way they hang out is pretty unbelievable. So uh, I'm glad you got a little little flavor of <laughs> what Dean and Garrett are all about tonight because they mean so much to our team. I mean, I think about Dean and, you know, he mentioned number zero, uh, but the reason he wears it and has to change to it is because he had zero Division One offers, FBS offers okay. coming out of high school and uh, goes to JUCO and we offer him. And so it's that chip. And every great player I've ever been around has that chip, you know, that just keeps driving them to, through, and beyond what they think is possible. And that's Dean's, and and I love that. Like, I I was like, no, you're not changing your number. You just got here. And he told me why. I was like, yep, you're changing your number. Good for you. (laughs) So uh, that's awesome. And and GH, man, Garen Hargan is maybe the most unselfish player on our team. Like, he's the quarterback of our punt team. Uh, In the short yards and goal line stuff, like, there's times where – you know, you're the windshield, and there's times where you're the bug. Like, if the number gets called right, you get to go hit the linebacker and drive him backwards so Dean can jump over the top. But if you're the backside guy, you're part of the Patriot Missile Program. You go and put yourself, jump over the center, let the backside linebacker hit you any way he wants to so you protect the runner. And, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know how you can have a more selfless job than that. So Different dude, right? Different dude, man. <laughs> different dude. And you can see why we love Coach Settle, Settle and how lucky we are to have him here. I mean, it's, uh, again, I just feel so fortunate I get to work with these kind of people every day. Well, you've got a great Tulane team coming in. Uh, they're 18-3 and the last two seasons. Saw this note uh, with their win Saturday. They beat North Texas. Uh, trailed only Georgia and Michigan for the most wins nationally the last mm. two years. So uh, w- what's this team do well? Obviously, we talked about the defense some, but just uh, balanced with Pratt and Hughes on offense, too, and defense that seem obviously the whole units have come together. Yeah, JP, they do everything well. Yeah. They're a really well-put-together football team. Uh, they are so different than what we would have played last year in Conference USA. You know, it's like it seems like every week in the American is a great team, like guys that have great players. This is probably the uh, the best American team we played from top to bottom this year. Uh, they're so talented. They play really well within their scheme. They're going to do what they do and think that they can play better than you and beat you by doing that. So that's the challenge right there. Like, 
you know, it's, it's some people like baffle you with BS. These guys are going to dazzle you with dance. They're going to think they can line up and kick your butt. And we're going to have some great answers. And I think it's an incredible football game. I love having this ranked team, the defending conference champs, come into historic Rice Stadium this weekend. And, and Pratt, obviously a lot of the headlines last year were making their run, and they won the, the New Year's Day game. Uh, AAC Offensive Player of the Week, uh, what, what's Pratt do at QB so well? Yeah, he's really good, man. Uh, and so is our quarterback, you know? Like, uh, he doesn't <laughs> suck. Like, we're, we got two great quarterbacks going in this game. It's going to make this thing awesome, man. Two really good football teams. And, you know, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I, I'm just fired up that we put ourselves in position to make this a big game. Uh, that's what you want. You want these opportunities, especially in your home stadium and you're one in the American. Like, what else could we ask for? Mm -hmm. I love it, Coach. Get me fired up already. Yeah. One last thing that yeah. I got to say before we get off the please, air. Please. So I, I don't want to put my boss on blast, but it's been all over Twitter that it's his birthday. So I want to make okay. sure that if anybody is around Tommy McClellan, they buy him a drink tonight. So Did I don't not know, know where that. he is, but I just want to say that. Did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Happy birthday, Happy uh, birthday. Tommy. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach, thanks. Talk Thank to you, you tomorrow. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you all, Appreciate man. it. Dunleavy family of football coach for Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. We'll get out of here. Uh, thanks to Walter here, engineering. Brent back in the studio filling in. All of you for coming out. And thanks to our running back uh, backfield crew of uh, uh, Garen Hargon blocking, blocking for Dean Connors. And then John Sebo running back to coach. I guess that's my music. We're out of here. We're going. Have a great rest of this night. God bless. Go Owls Rice fight. We'll talk to you Saturday. Rice in Tulane. Uh, get your tickets if you haven't already. This has been the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield.